So I'm not saying these immunosuppressive medications are all evil because they are great and I'm really happy that we have them when we really need to calm down the immune system. The problem is, is when you stay on these for 30 years or 40 years or maybe even a couple years because that's going to further cause trauma to the body. You're listening to the Integrative Medical Podcast with Dr. Jake, a licensed naturopathic doctor who will show you how to tap into your body's natural ability to heal your health issue and improve your symptoms quickly without harmful drugs or devastating surgeries. So pour some tea, get comfortable where you are, and enjoy this healing episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Teresa. I am a mom. I'm a health nut and I'm a wife to a cancer survivor. And today I'm talking with Dr. Jake from Integrative Medica about the biggest mistakes people make with autoimmune conditions. Dr. Jake? A lot of people make a lot of mistakes and this could be a big problem with autoimmune disease because their condition likely will get worse if they make these mistakes. Maybe they just go with one route and they get worse because they're doing that route or they don't do anything and then their autoimmune disease destroys their body. So talk about these mistakes will be really fun today. Have you ever had a, a patient come in who's been making a, a lot of these mistakes and you know have helped them at all with actually recovering? Yeah. So one patient that comes to mind to me is a patient of mine named Jen. So she was dealing with rheumatoid arthritis. She had been to several other uh, conventional rheumatologists and other doctors for her condition. She was a nurse and uh, she was getting conventional treatments, but she wasn't really feeling good on taking the immunosuppressants, et cetera. So she was looking at, at a different approach so she could actually feel better and really identify the cause of what's causing her autoimmune condition. So she came in we did a thorough assessment. I was able to see her for 45 minutes. We talked about what we wanted to do. I was able to formulate a detailed treatment plan that was going after truly what was causing her condition and not just suppressing the symptoms of her condition. And nowadays she's really off of all autoimmune protocols. She's not on any immunosuppressants. She's following a good diet, doing a few supplements, and she's keeping the rheumatoid arthritis at bay. So she's not having any more joint pain. Her fatigue's better. Her mental clarity's better. And she's able to live a normal life without any medication at all. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, I know that you mentioned a couple of the symptoms that she was going through, but you know, we might have listeners here today um, who themselves are struggling with autoimmune, or maybe they have some loved ones who might be struggling with autoimmune. What are some common autoimmune like symptoms that they might be experiencing? So yeah, talking about autoimmune disease is quite broad. There's hundreds of different autoimmune diseases and autoimmune diseases attack different parts of the body. So the symptoms are going to be all different, but common ones are you could have joint pain, fatigue, lethargy, brain fog, you could have some neuropathic pain, muscle pains, you might have some digestive issues like gas, bloating, diarrhea can be related to this. So those are some broad symptoms, but there's all kinds of symptoms that could be related with autoimmune disease. My question would be, you know, with your integrative approach, is your goal to get rid of the symptoms of autoimmune disease or something else? So my main goal is not just to eliminate the symptoms, because let's say we all we do is go after eliminating the symptoms of the disease, the cause is still hanging out. So that immune issue is still being caused, you're just eliminating the immune system and we need the immune system to be able to function. So my main cause is to identify what is causing the immune system to go crazy, what's causing the immune system to attack a certain part of the body. So I do a thorough question in laboratory work, et cetera, to really identify really what is that cause. That's great. Well, then let's get into that. Let's discover, you know, how to better be able to keep our autoimmune conditions under control so that we can actually address that cause. But I know first, we do need to remind our audience that this is just a podcast, right, Dr. Dick? Yeah, so this is only a podcast and we only could talk about so much here in the podcast. So if you guys are dealing with autoimmune disease, or you have a friend or other health issues, give me and my staff a call at 801-676-9876 or visit our website at integrativemedica.com to set up an appointment. Wonderful. Okay, Dr. Jake, so what's one of the first biggest mistakes that you see people making who have autoimmune conditions? So the number one big mistake that I see patients make is they think that the only thing they can do is what the rheumatologist suggests. They think that they only can do an immunosuppressive medication like methotrexate, Humira, prednisone. The problem with that is it's only going after the symptoms. We talked about that. That's a problem because you're not really treating what is causing the issue. So let's go into detail there. So when you just take a immunosuppressing medication, yeah, that will help with maybe your rheumatoid arthritis because it's going to help improve that joint pain, or it might improve your lupus, or it might improve things because it's suppressing that immunological response. But let's say that cause is still hanging out and that cause gets worse and worse because you're not identifying the symptom. 
what can be really bad is a very common cause of autoimmune disease is chronic infections, like let's say Lyme disease or Epstein-Barr virus or other bacterial infections could be a major cause of autoimmune conditions. And then you're suppressing the immune system those chronic diseases are just going to get worse and worse and damage certain organs in the body. So you might feel better, but other things are still getting worse. Also, when you're just suppressing the immune system, you're going to be increased risk for infections. You're going to have increased risk of cancer. It's going to affect your mood. It's going to affect your energy. It's going to affect your digestive health, your hormones, et cetera. So you're just not going to feel good in general. That specific condition might be feeling a little bit better, but everything else in your body is getting worse. So what's really good is the combination of a rheumatologist for say, and an integrated physician or a naturopathic physician, which is really able to identify the cause of that condition and get your immune system calmed down. And then we can slowly get you off of your autoimmune medications. Or if you've never gone with autoimmune conditions, I think that's a great first start. And if we can't get things calmed down with immunosuppressive medications, we get you on there and then slowly wean you off of it because we don't want you on those forever. One of the things that you mentioned, I think really struck me first is all of the, the possible conditions that you can start developing if you block your immune system with these immunos, you know, immunosuppressants. My mm -hmm. mother has lupus and she, you know, she was diagnosed, gosh, when she was 30, she's 60 now, still thriving. She told me that all of her friends that she met in her lupus journey, who all, you know, who also had lupus, that they've all passed away by now, she's the only one left. So based on what you're saying here, they were all going the traditional route that you're talking about, where they were using these immunosuppressants and so forth, where my mother was is doing more of an integrative approach, that, which we'll talk more in detail about, you know, how you approach it. These people that died without knowing anything specific, would you say that likely they died of complications due to other conditions that happened because their immune systems were suppressed or did the lupus itself lead to their passing like overall what, what would you say is yeah so i think it likely was a combination so when you suppress the immune system it's not like oh we're suppressing the immune system the immune system we don't really need that the immune system does so many things for our body i don't know why rheumatologists don't realize that i think they're just going after okay this person's in pain their joints hurt let's give them something that has been shown to relieve that they don't really have the training that the, really identify what is the leading cause of that. So yes, you're only taking like Humira, for example, you're suppressing the immune system and those causes are still hanging out. Okay. So let's say it's a food allergy and you're still eating those foods. Let's say if it's a chronic infection, you're still doing that. Let's say it's caused by a heavy metal and you're still doing that. Let's say you're still exposed to emotional trauma and you're still doing that. So everything's just getting worse and worse and worse. But guess what? You don't know it's getting worse because your immune system suppressed and then your organs start having damage. Like your nervous system, your liver, your kidneys, your digestive tract, and then you just start deteriorating, deteriorating, deteriorating. And many times then you have to take more medication that suppresses more things in your body, which then makes your body not work as well as it could. So it's very important to really find out why is your immune system attacking itself? There's a reason why it's attacking itself. We need to find out why it's doing that. It's not like it's just willy nilly attacking itself because it wanted to. There's something's going on in the body and it's starting to attack itself and we need to find that out. So in the probably in your friends' cases, they weren't really finding out what's going on and their cause got worse, but also the immune system was suppressed. So they're not able to heal and regenerate. Well, maybe that they got cancer. Maybe they got some digestive issue. Maybe they got a bug, got chronic and killed them. So yeah, it's a combination of both. It reminds me a little bit of like learning about, you know, leprosy, you know, thousands of years ago where I was learning that what actually destroys them is, is that because they don't have pain, they hurt themselves. And that's how they end up losing, you know, limbs and so forth, because they don't know that they're hurting themselves. And then their body is just getting worse and worse and worse. So it sounds to me that, you know, our, our pain receptors are there for a reason. And it's telling us that something's wrong and getting rid of the pain might feel good, but it, it only covers up what's actually causing the pain. And since we don't address that, the problem can actually get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. All right. So is there ever a need for some of these? Like, are there ever situations in which, you know, it might be a good at, to use a steroid or something while you're working on healing from an autoimmune? Yeah. So in some instances, you might be having this huge inflammatory cascade happening in your body. And let's say it's really attacking your joints, or let's say it's really attacking your colon, causing ulcerative colitis, and you're, you're bleeding a lot. And we need to really calm that down very quickly. And that's what's really great about a steroid or other immunosuppressants is it's able to calm that down quick. But we don't want to stay on that long term because that's going to cause the problem. Short term, it's going to be okay, but long term, it's a problem. So you've calm it down. 
And then we work on identifying the causes and then we slowly wean you off of these immunosuppressive medications. So I'm not saying these immunosuppressive medications are all evil because they are great. And I'm really happy that we have them when we really need to calm down the immune system. The problem is, is when you stay on these for 30 years or 40 years, or maybe even a couple of years, because that's going to further cause trauma to the body. So I heard you mentioning of these other possible causes for the autoimmune condition. And this is what you you test for. So someone comes in and they see, you know, they, they see an integrative doctor, they may or may not be taking the traditional immunosuppressant type of medication, you might have them stay on, you might have them get off, whatever. What are some of these other things that you test for in order to identify the cause of their autoimmune? So let's dive into one of the other big mistakes that we have is diet. Okay. So okay. what I do is I really look at the patient's diet and see how their diet is doing to see what type of foods they're eating to see if they're eating tons of carbs or eating tons of sugar. But a big one too, is I want to identify what foods they're having a reaction to a food sensitivity or a food allergy. So I do a food allergy testing. My favorite test is a lymphocyte histamine response test, which really finds the histamine that the body's making in response to a food, which means there's this chronic inflammatory response happening. I see this in every autoimmune patient I have is they have some type of food that they're reacting to. So that's a big one. I also like to look at chronic infections. Some really big ones are Epsom-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, Lyme disease, mycoplasma pneumonia, chronic strep. But there's all kinds of other bugs that could be in there that we need to identify that could be causing their issue. So I always want to rule that out. I also want to see if they, in their history, if they have any exposure to heavy metals. Let's say they have had a lot of amalgams in their mouth, these silver fillings in their mouth. I want to see if mercury might be related to it. I want to see if they've had any potential lead exposure, or arsenic exposure, et cetera, because these can make your immune system go crazy. I want to see if they've had any exposure to a lot of chemicals, uh, solvents, et cetera. It's a big thing of a looking at several different pieces to identify what is the cause of that specific patient's autoimmune condition. So that's just a quick list. It goes much in more detail depending on the history that I take and what I want to look at. Oh, one other one is mold is a big one too that I see very often. I live in a very dry climate and I in the beginning of my practice, I didn't really order mold testing very much. I'm like, oh, people don't have mold. But I was totally wrong that there's big mold issues in dry places. And it's even bigger problem in wet places. But mold is a big issue with autoimmune disease very often. Let's go back to what you were saying about diet. You said that, you know, every patient that you see with an autoimmune condition has some sort of allergic reaction to some sort of food that they're eating. With the standard American diet, what is the problem with this diet that is causing some of these issues that you're seeing? Yeah. So the sad diet, it's really sad because it's really low in nutrients and very inflammatory. What it is, it's really high in inflammatory fatty acids, really high in sugar and very low nutrient density. Probably a lot of the viewers can relate. This is a typical diet. Okay. It's high in potatoes. It's high in bread. It's high in a lot of meat. And then it's high in vegetable oils or a lot of saturated fats, lard, etc. That's a typical American diet. And it's not high in fruits or vegetables or nuts and seeds, which are very anti-inflammatory. Everything that you're eating is very pro-inflammatory. So this is going to cause this inflammatory cascade happening that's just kind of brewing in, in the body and it's going to start an autoimmune condition. Or let's say you have been exposed to Epstein-Barr virus and you eat a really yucky diet for a really long time that's very pro-inflammatory can reactivate that virus, which then blows up your immune system and can lead to rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis or lupus, et cetera. I keep hearing you say inflammatory. Uh -huh. is, would you say then that inflammation is the cause of autoimmune or like yes. a, what yeah, triggers yeah. it, you know, from the, from what's causing the inflammation, obviously you have to keep going further back what's causing the inflammation, but like, is the inflammation the, the problem? Inflammation is definitely a huge problem with autoimmune disease. That's the reason why you have an autoimmune condition. There's some type of inflammatory response happening in a certain area of your body. Rheumatoid arthritis is your joints. Multiple sclerosis, it's your myelin sheath. When it's ulcerative colitis, it's your colon and your rectum. So it's just based on this inflammatory cascade that's happening in a specific area of the body and we give it a name. So yes, it's all inflammatory issues. And for some, some people have an inflammatory issue in the joints and other people have it in the colon. We don't know exactly why that happens, but the causes are very similar. And inflammation, your body's attempt at healing a, a problem? So I'm not saying inflammation is absolutely bad. What the problem is, is chronic inflammation, long-term inflammation. So when you get a cut, 
you want an inflammatory process to happen to regenerate and heal that specific cut. So that's very good, but it's short term and it goes away. Let's say you injure your knee. You want your body to go in there and heal and regenerate that damaged tissue that happened in your knee and it might get swollen for a little bit, but then it goes down and goes away. The problem is, is when it's lasting for six weeks or longer, this is really getting chronic and that's a real problem. What happens is your immune system starts destroying that specific area. It's not healing anymore. It's now it's destroying it. It's interesting because I know for me, when I eat bad food and I, I've come to figure out what's bad food for me, but if, like I, if I didn't plan my day right and I have to go and get fast food, I know that the consequence is going to be for me joint pain. Like my shoulder and my elbows and my wrist will just throb after having bad food. And you would think like, oh, the bad food would affect my gut or something like that. And then that's what would hurt. But for some reason with my body, the inflammation, at least what I feel seems to attack more my joints, but I noticed directly correlated to food. And so it's, it's interesting that, you know, you mentioned the sad diet, because I know fast food is, you know, a big part of our culture. And one of the things that I also see a lot of people eating, including in my own journey, one of the things that I had to really figure out, I need to cut this out, because it really does not work well with me is a lot of dairy. I mean, heavy on the dairy, milk in your cereal, cheese on your sandwich, uh, pizzas and quesadillas at night. It just, it seems like it, it was everywhere. Every restaurant, every, you know, popular meal uh, had it. And so for me, I, I definitely had to uh, eliminate that in my journey. The last one that I, I we were talking about before we jumped on this call, you had mentioned, you know, in my own journey, I, I've gone on and, you know, searched the internet and so forth and in trying to help myself heal what, what some of the mistakes that people make with that approach. So before I dive into that, I just wanted to dive into I didn't really talk about specific inflammatory foods. So let's dive into that just real sure. quick. So there's grains that are very inflammatory like wheat, corn, those are some big ones. And then rice can be in there. Dairy is definitely a huge one. Sugar, refined sugar like cane sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and then even beans can be a, a potential problem, et cetera. So those are some of the basic things. And then poor quality meats. That means not grass-fed beef, eating meat that is corn-fed. Let's say you eat a cow that's been eating tons of corn. They're going to have inflammatory fatty acids. If you're eating a cow that's eating a ton of grass, they're going to have more anti-inflammatory, more like olive oil type of uh, anti-inflammatory fatty acids in there. So if you're eating a lot of meat, you're eating a lot of dairy, you're eating a lot of grains, that's very pro-inflammatory. And that's what really a lot of people are doing here in the United States is eating like that. So let's go down into the next biggest mistake is really people think that they're doing okay when they search Dr. Google. <laughs> so they, they go online, they read all these things from maybe other doctors saying things or other health practitioners, or they read what other people are doing and they start doing that. Or they read online and be like, I don't really need to do much. Like these people, all they did is take out gluten out of their diet and they're all better. So all I need to do to treat my rheumatoid arthritis is take away gluten. And then maybe they do that and they think they're getting better, but they still are in pain, but they still think they're getting better. And then guess what happens is their joints start to deteriorate and now they get the, their joints don't move and now they're stuck because they really didn't really find out what was really causing the issue and they didn't do anything really to block that inflammatory response. Or maybe they thought that all I needed to do is really do turmeric and boswellia and I'm going to be all good. Or I just need to take away gluten, do some anti-inflammatory herbs and I'm fine. In some instances, people are going to be fine, but in many instances, that's not going to be the case. Or And what I see in a lot of patients too, is they get very confused. So they're like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. Wait, this guy says this. This guy says this. What am I supposed to do? What type of diet am I supposed to follow? Uh, some people say grains are bad. Some people say meat is bad. Some people yeah. say we need to just eat a vegan diet. Some people say we need to eat more of a paleo diet. It's all over the place. So you could get extremely confused what is really what is the science really saying and what really is going to be be good for you per se? So you need to really go to a professional that could really bring it all together and help you become unconfused because Dr. Google would be extremely confusing. So if a patient were to come to see you, what I'm hearing you say is that you may not have the same diet for everyone. Would, would, would there be some patients that a paleo diet would work well for them in their situation? Another patient where a vegan diet might be the better approach? Yep, you're exactly right. So it's all dependent on the certain patient and how their body is going to respond. Some patients bodies are not going to do well with meat and they're going to have a big inflammatory response to that meat and they may need to eat more of a vegan diet. Other people are going to eat the vegan diet, but it's really high in sugar when they do that mm -hmm. and they're not going to do well with that. 
So sometimes it needs to be a balance. Sometimes we need to be really strict on the paleo because that worked really well for that patient. So it's about playing around with what's really going on with that specific patient. And what I think is really important is a lot of times why these specific diets don't do well for a patient is you need to identify if they have a reaction to a certain food. Paleo might not be good for someone because they're really sensitive to beef or chicken. And they're going to feel horrible when they eat beef and chicken. Vegan diet might not be good because they're sensitive to all these fruits and vegetables and they're eating all these fruits and vegetables and then they're feeling worse. So it's really important to really find out what food sensitivities you have because if you don't identify those, doesn't matter how good your diet is and how anti-inflammatory it is, it's not probably going to do the trick because you're still reacting to certain foods. The now, reason, is there a, yeah. a way to reduce your reaction? Like for example, if I if I am sensitive to, I think I heard the word like oxalates or something like that, might be like heavy uh, in, in some of these vegetables vegetables. Like, is there a way that you could eventually not be actually get rid of some of your hyper reactions to these foods? Yeah, some people might be sensitive to oxalates, let's say salicylates, that can be really hard. Sometimes we can decrease that and it depends what's going on. But if you have a real bad reaction to salicylates, we need to work on healing up your gut, getting your gut working very well, healing up the leaky gut syndrome. And then over time, you're able to eat more salicylates, but you're not going to be able to go crazy on the salicylates ever because your body's starting to have that reaction to it. But we can make it so you don't have to be as strict from not eating the salicylates. I have had some patients not have any problems over time with certain foods like salicylates, oxalates, or other type of constituents that are in food, like lectins, etc. These are all potential inflammatory things for people. So what we want to do is we want to heal up the gut. And over time, you are able to eat more of these foods. But in majority of cases, I've noticed that it's not like you could eat a ton of these foods ever again, you need it, you, you usually get to a point that you could eat more of them. But you can't go crazy on eating those specific foods, because they're very inflammatory for your body. You mentioned gut health is, is, would you, I mean, when you see patients with autoimmune conditions, whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or Hashimoto's or whatever it is that they might have, would you say that gut, like healing the gut is a common denominator that's necessary for all of them? It has to be done. I can't really think of a patient that I haven't seen that they have some type of gut issue. Now that doesn't mean that you have a gut symptom, like you have diarrhea, constipation, gas, bloating, abdominal pain. A lot of people think that if I don't have those issues, my gut's good. And that's definitely not true. You could have no symptoms at all in your gut, but you still have a leaky gut or increased intestinal permeability, which is leading to your whole autoimmune condition. I'm able to order tests and really rule that out and identify if that is going on. I really can't think of anyone that I haven't seen that there's a gut issue going on. So it's a very big piece with autoimmune disease. I know I've, I've often considered myself a, a canary, you know, uh, where I, I just been very sensitive. I've noticed symptoms like, you know, gut wise right away. And I, I always find for myself, like that's kind of been a blessing because it makes my, me have to keep myself in check. I think earlier than maybe some others where they don't know that they have an issue until boom, they have a full fledged, you know, disease yeah. that they're having to deal with. I'm hearing a lot of, okay, so you've got diet, you've got gut health, you know, gut health conditions, leaky gut. There's these tests that they can take, you know, to identify metals or parasites or these types of things. I know a lot of people you know, right away might be listening to this and thinking that's going to cost me a lot of money. What would you say to somebody, you know, who is thinking that they might have an auto um, autoimmune condition and wondering if it's just cheaper, if it's just going to be better for them financially, if they just take their steroid, you know, take their, the traditional type of approach and not go the route that integrative medicine goes through. So, yeah. So let's say you decide just to go with the medication route. Let's talk about like a medication like Humira. That medication is 4,000 bucks a month. So you can do 4,000 times 12. That's you an idea how much that medication costs over a month. Now your insurance probably will pay for quite a bit of that, but it's not going to pay for all of it in many instances. And you still are going to pay a lot of money. And that's for the rest of your life. When right, you're actually going to an integrated physician, guess what they're going to do? They're going to identify what is specifically causing the issue. So you might be paying a little bit more upfront. But then over time, you never have to pay many, any money anymore because the cause is eliminated. You might need to pay like 50 bucks to 100 bucks a, a month to keep your immune system at bay. And that's, that's about it. But in the beginning, yeah, it might cost a little bit to be able to find out what's really causing the issue. But in the long run, it's going to be a ton cheaper than taking the immunosuppressive medications and you're going to feel a lot better. Now, I know medical insurance doesn't always, um, some medical insurances will cover, you know, more integrative approaches. Some don't, just really depends on what the person has. You know, do you have 
you know, patients that come in with more limited budgets? Are there ways to be able to approach an autoimmune condition differently depending on on the budget that somebody has towards their health? So I'm always cognizant of people's budget. I will formulate the protocol that I think is going to be best with them and present that to them. But if that is not affordable to them, I modify it as needed. But there are a lot of the the labs and things that I need to order that will be covered by your insurance. There are specialty labs that aren't going to be covered by your insurance because they don't only cover basic things. And if you go outside that realm, they're not going to cover it. But let's say I formulate a treatment protocol that's out of someone's budget. I always tailor it to what they can do. And many times they still do get better. They might be get more better if they did the whole shebang. But I have had patients that have decided, I can't afford all this. I'm going to do the diet and supplements and I'm going to do the other procedures that you've recommended to me. And I've seen them have no symptoms ever again and their autoimmune profiles all went away. So it can be extremely cheap. Sometimes it's more expensive. Every patient might be a little bit different, but I try to make it as affordable as possible for every patient that comes into my office. So you don't have to be rich to get treated. You, you definitely don't have to be that way. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Jake, for you know your insight today on how to approach autoimmune in a in a way that actually uh, gets to the root cause. Um, how can people uh, get a hold of you? The best way is to visit my website and call our phone number. If you talk to my receptionist, you could call 801-676-9876, or you just go to the website and look at the number and give us a call. And you could set up a visit with me or someone on my team. Do people have to live in, you know, the Salt Lake City area to be able to uh, see you or another one of your doctors? So, in your so yeah, so we do in-person visits and we also do virtual visits. So you could be living wherever in the world and we could be treating you. So you don't have to be where my office is. Wonderful. Well, thanks again so much for your time today, Dr. Jake, and we'll see everybody next week. See ya. It was fun. Hey, Dr. Jake, thank you for your time today. And if you enjoyed the show, then do us a favor and leave a review. It helps more people to find the show, which could save their life. And remember, this is a podcast and should not replace personalized attention from a medical professional like Dr. Jake. If you or someone you know has been diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder, cancer of any stage, or a life-changing illness, visit our website today and schedule a virtual appointment with one of our doctors who can lead you to a treatment plan in your area. That's integrativemedica.com. Integrativemedica.com. Thank you for listening to the Integrative Medica podcast with Dr. J. To hear past episodes and get alerts for the future, subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting platform and be sure to follow us on YouTube as well. Just search for Integrative Medica with Dr. Jake.